Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Can, can you get a hallelujah? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. It's a sad day. But it's God's day. It's God's day. It always has been God's day. The first and the last. The giver of life. And when he wants us, he calls us. He doesn't ask us. He said, do you want to come or not? He said, it's time. And welcome. Good morning. Good morning to everybody. Good morning, Good morning to those here, those on the way, those online. We welcome you. 
in Jesus' name. Um, can I say, for those of you who don't know, my name is Michael Hendrickson, and I'm a retired deacon. Not a tired deacon, one that's retired. And it's an honor to be here. Pastor Gordon, God bless him, has sent us at the theme and the order of service. <laughs> it was sent to Diane um, early on in the week. Yes, the order of service. And, and it's here. It come before the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you. Thanks for blessing us. We acknowledge you once again as Lord and God, the giver of life and the taker of life. You breathe life into us. You give us bodies and minds and hearts and lungs and breaths to worship you. For that, we give you thanks. We pray for all those that's here this morning, that's listening, that's looking at the service, taking part in the service. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for his dedication to the church. He's been a shepherd, he's been a leader, he's been a servant. He's been your hands and feet. He's been a friend. He's been your son, he's your child. And you saw it fit to call him home. But for his memories, for his legacy, it's monumental. And we give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. And wherever you are, we welcome you at this day. It's a day when we, you know, we're rejoicing and yet it is such a sad time. And I want to say a special welcome to Maxine, Georgina, Benjamin and Christine. You know, I know it must be very difficult. I know I'm standing here because I just feel that we need to be reassured. Pastor Gordon, is somebody who would want us to be here this morning. I've had a few messages, you know, is church on, what's happening? Let me reassure you, nothing interferes with the work of the Lord. Amen. And that would be pastor's words, nothing. So be reassured, we are all at a place where we didn't expect to be, and I think because things have moved 30 hours and we don't, you know, we just can't, we're at a stage where we're still trying to process some of that information. And if we're at that place, where do you think the family are? You know, this family has been through and is going through such a difficult time. But I know God is there in the midst, sustaining them, strengthening them, and he will see you through, Maxine, because of your faith. You've got your family around you. As I said, you know, things have moved. It's only Tuesday, pastor was laying to rest his brother. And within a few days, he's going to join him. You know, I, you know, I'm still really, <laughs> you know, not able to sort of looking at things. But one thing came to me last night um, when we were reflecting, because the deacons met yesterday for a brief moment just to see how we progress today, not knowing what would be the outcome. And when I went home and when I heard the news, what went through my mind was a service by Gregory a few years ago. And two verses, 
you read for that sermon, and one of them was Jesus wept. And what he said, I don't know if you remember it, when young Toby went up to read, and before he, he read, before people realized he'd read the scripture, no matter what is happening, we do not let our emotions override what God has called us to do. He has, if you believe, and you know, I, I just go back to the theme for this year when Pastor said it last Saturday. And I just pray that everybody remember that theme because I know Pastor was at that place where he knew Christ. No matter what had gone on, no matter what happened, he knew Christ. So please, in his memory, reflect about your spirituality where you are. Because if we want to see him again, <laughs> we have to be in the same place as he is. Okay? So we need to reflect where we are. And all I want to say is please remember, God is our sustainer, is our strength, is our comforter, and he will see us through. No matter how rough the sea, the storm is, God is at the front. He, has a, he had a plan, and he knew what his plan was. No matter how wise we are, no matter how much we understand the Bible, we will never be as wise as God. And we need to remember that. He's in control. So all I'm saying, please remember, we have to support each other. We are going through a difficult period. Remember the family, we have to support them. Because yes, we've got our own emotional, you know, we're all gonna deal with it differently. But remember, that family need our support to enable them to cope with all that they are going through and what they've been through. I remember when I went up on Friday and one of his nephew, a young lad, whose father was laid to rest on Tuesday, you know, I met him in the corridor and, you know, I said, you know, because I remember them from the Tuesday funeral and um, I said, he said, it's so unreal and I said, yes. I said, you know, I'm still struggling where we're at. And I said, you know, I saw him briefly on Wednesday because he popped in for about 10 minutes. And he said to me, how was he? <laughs> was he all right? How did he say he felt? And I said, well, he said he was okay. I said, how are you? And he said, I'm okay. And he said, yes, he's always saying he's okay when you ask him how he is. And for me, it was about trying to process what had gone on. But you know, Pastor knew he, he always knew he was all right because his relationship with God was all right. And we have to remember that. So we remember him, but we remember the family and we support them. And Psalms 119 verse 76 says, may your unfailing love be my comfort according to your promise to your servant. So we hold on to that God has promised us. He'll be our comforter, our strength, our sustainer. So please just continue to support each other. We've had condolences from Reverend Dave, uh, Dave Ellis, who's the regional uh, minister. Pastor was also a member of uh, the Heart of England Baptist Association who looks after our church. So we've had condolences, and I knew he was coming up on, supposed to come up yesterday. I don't know he managed to get there. And that was, you know, about seeing the young people especially, because I just feel at the moment, you know, they are in a place where they, also from um, other members at Heba, the Heart of England Baptists, we've had condolences from there. We've also had condolences from Reverend Joseph, you know, who, from, from Kenya, who has been worshiping with us and had to go away. And I've passed that message on to Maxine as well. 
and I understand Carver has also sent uh, a video. So we are going to play a video at the end of service before the last song. Yeah, because Maxine has sent that video. Some of you have seen it, though for those who haven't seen it, but I think it's appropriate to play it there and listen to what is being said. Okay, so thank you, thank you. And we just pray God will bless us. Thank you for the prayer. Thank you, Pauline. Pauline is our secretary. Um, pastor left this call to worship. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest from your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Amen. We have an opening song. There is a sweet anointing in this place. Now, is there a sweet anointing in this place? There is a sweet anointing in this place. Can I hear? There is a sweet anointing in this place. Praise the Lord. We'd like to stand, please. Thank you. 
like to be seated, please. Yeah. As the um, deacons and f friends arrive to give prayer for the family, can I say during the service, if you feel like sitting down, reflecting, please do. If you feel like standing during the song and singing, please do. If you feel like shedding a tear, please do. If you feel like shouting hallelujah, God bless, please. If you feel like being just silent, please do. It, it, is, it is a service in honor of our pastor, in honor of our savior. It is God's house. We are God's people. Amen. Amen. The deacons and, and friends would like to pray. to 
comforter to the comfortless. Be with us now as we give you praise and thanks, Almighty Father, acknowledging you as Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. 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 Please Amen. be seated, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Pastor Gordon, thank you. Bless you. And so you've left the um, Bible reading, and it's Matthew chapter 11, verses, sorry, the Bible reading. <laughs> Get me eventually. Bible reading is 1 Samuel at chapter 16, verses 2 to 13. Wendy, are you able to read it? Yes, if, if not, we'll, yes. Yes, please. Can we, can we help Wendy along? You know, Wendy's not feeling up for it, so, yeah. Why don't we all read this? I've got it. Yes. One Samuel. One Samuel, chapter 60. I'll tell you what we'll do. I've got it. Okay. Wendy and myself will read one verse. Okay. You'll read the next one. And, yes, okay. Oh, just get that. One Samuel, chapter 16. Good morning, church. It's difficult for Maxim in the family. And we love Pastor and miss him. And I can hear with his song today saying, Wendy, be bold, be strong, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. Yeah. And I'm not good on a public platform, and this is difficult, okay. but I know Pastor would have said that, be bold and be strong. And I pray the yeah. Lord will comfort Maxine and the family, and we miss him so much. Okay. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? Since I have rejected him as king over Israel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. Okay. Your turn. But Samuel says, How can I go? Lord said, take a heifer with him, I have come to sacrifice to you. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, our turn now. Invite, invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel replied, yes, in peace. peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. But the Lord said to Samuel, Samuel do, do not, not consider his appearance or his height. For I have rejected, rejected him. him. The Lord, Lord does, does not look, look at, at the, the things people, people look at. People, people look at the outward appearance, but the Lord, Lord looks, looks at, at the heart. heart.
Jesse, Jesse then ben. had Shammah pass by, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. All together, the one of oil anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Who said this is a sad service? It is sad. But there's a, there's a sweet anointing. And there's a, there's a joy. There is a joy. When we go home, you know, we're going home, we're marching in. When the saints go marching in, we're marching in with our head held high, triumphantly, because God is our saviour, he's our deliverer, he's our keeper, and he's, he's gone to prepare I'm a place for me and for you and for pastor and for everybody that's lived, has ever lived, and is yet to live. Amen? Amen. 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 Feel the joy. Yes. Feel, feel the, the power. Yes. The power of God within us. The light shines in the darkness. Pastor likes that one, doesn't he? <laughs> it, was, it was only a few weeks ago when he talked about the light in darkness. The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. The light is still there. Thank you. Secretary. Thank you. Let me read, sorry. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our heart is broken, but in all of that, we are going to have joy this morning. We are going to give a hallelujah praise to our God in honor of our pastor Gordon. So let me hear that hallelujah praise now, church. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We will not be defeated. We are more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Because we are not standing on our own feet. We are standing on holy ground in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. It is wonderful to see these beautiful faces. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sister Maxine. Georgina. Ben. Sonia. Sonia. Christine. <laughs> Sonia and family. And the rest of the family. We just want to give God praise. Church family, we want to give God thanks that he has brought us together in this place for this season, yes. for this season. Yes. And we are not going to let that season pass us. We are in a new season. Yes. Friday night we had a, um, I, I'm just jumping all over the place now, so forgive me. Friday night we, have a, uh, we had a, a, a prayer meeting here. And my God, saints, I will tell you, for me, that was akin to the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. We had people who I never seen, but the church was full. And people just cry out to God and say, Lord, your will be done. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. And I know we, we pray, let your will be done. And sometimes when God will come, it's hard for beer. But he's still with us. God is still with us. And saints, I know you are, your, your heart is bleeding this morning. Your heart is broken this morning. But as Michael said, we're just going to sing a shout of praise an almighty God, because that is what he expects us, expects us to do. Pastor Gordon, when he stood there last week and preaching, he didn't know that today 
he would not be here, but he would expect his, his, his sheep that he has been leading for the years that he's been here to continue, to continue. Amen. So good morning, church, and welcome to you online, Jim. We know so you're watching now. So God bless you, brother Jim, and we, are, we understand. Jim is one of our um, members who is living in Jamaica now, and he's, he watches the service every week. So he's on top of the, he's got his finger on the pulse. In John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, just before um, Christ was about to leave this earth, he comforted, he comforted his disciples. And when it took me, I think it was up until midnight, past midnight last night, trying to write, you know, prepare my um, the notices because it was so hard. I mean, one of the moments when I thought, oh God, I don't even know if I can face church tomorrow. But then straight away the voice says, you have to be there. You need to be here, and we need to be here. So Jesus, when he was about to leave this earth, he comforted his disciples, saying, do not let your heart be... Can you put that up for me, Ruth, please, if you, if you can? Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me, which is God, in Jesus. My, my father's house has many rooms. If that was not so, I would not have told you. And if I go and prepare a place, I will come back to take you to be with me that you may be with me. I share this passage of scriptures, um, brethren, today as a church, as we comfort each other, and as we try to um, reflect on the last 48, 32, 48 hours, and how to put it into perspective. Yes, our hearts are breaking at the passing of our dearly beloved pastor, Pastor Gordon, but as we join hands and hearts together, as a family of believers, standing with her sister Maxine, her family, her three children and her family, and just continue to serve God because the work of God must go on. Yes, the work of God must go on. So we raise a hallelujah praise to our God in honor of Pastor Gordon and um, in, unto our God. Our brother, our pastor, our friend is at that place that the Lord had gone ahead and prepared for him. So he's there now, and as Michael said earlier, if any of us want to be there at that place, we need to make ourselves ready, and that is what we do. So we want to give God thanks and praise for the life of Pastor Gordon. So welcome to one and all, both of who is in the house and those of us online, we just want to say thank you. Um, I see a few faces that I don't know. Anyone here visiting for the very first time in this fellowship? Can you please stand, anyone? So we can give you a, a welcome. Welcome. Let's see those. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank God. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Um, today it's our communion service, and the things are going to continue, as, as Perlene said. So at the end of the service, we'll have communion. And for those who are believers and walking in the Lord, the table will be spread and you can partake and we'll just do that. And uh, we've got our first time um, worshipers. So thank you for choosing City Road Baptist Church as your place of worship today. And may many blessings and praises be to God to you. I left my notice sheet. Uh, Michael, thank you for leading. I know it's hard. Wendy, for reading. I know it's hard. For Pastor Manuel, who, Brother Manuel, who will, Reverend Manuel, who will be bringing the word. For the worship team, for all of you here, thank you for being here. Thank you. And we just want to say thank you as we continue. Oh God. So for housekeeping, if you haven't already done so, can I kindly ask that you put your mobile phones in silence or turn them off. Toilets for those who are new are, is out the door on my right. And we, won't, we don't expect to have the alarm going off today. For offering, um, we'll be taking up the offering in a little while, but also if you choose to, you can uh, go online and put, pay your tithes and your offering um, that way. Activities for the week, I hope you do have a notice sheet. Um, tomorrow evening, we have our deacons meeting that was already planned and that will continue. Um, next Sunday, it's our refreshment Sunday. Um, we have a prayer meeting here on Wednesday 
at um, 3, 2 p.m. till 4, and that's for the Golden family and for the church family. So wh whoever can make it, please make an effort to come. All the information is up there. And the Bible studies as, and that are there as they are, and they, and they continue. The only one, as you may be aware, is a past, the one on a Wednesday evening, which Pastor Gordon normally run. In time, that will get started again. So we just want to give God thanks for that. And all these um, notices are subject to the will of the Almighty God. And we just want to continue to encourage us in prayer. Um, Sean, can you share that clip for me, please? As Maxine, not Maxine, Pearlie instead, Reverend Carter, Carver was here on, on, on Friday night with us, and he sent a little clip to the church. So Sean will play that now. Dearest City Road Baptist Church family, this is Pastor Carver, who was with you yesterday as we prayed for Pastor Glenn and as his darling wife, Sister Maxine, says today that it's in law, the Lord's plans and she humbly told us of the departure of Pastor Glenn to be with a cloud of witnesses. Now, yesterday we prayed, we sung, we literally went into Romans 8 to say that we're still more than conquerors and Pastor Glenn has taught the church well. Be open to the Lord continually leading you as a church because Pastor Glenn has set some deep roots. So please know that we are praying. My wife Pauline and I are praying for you as a church family and Sister Maxine and all of you. And we know that the Lord is with us and the Lord has Pastor Glenn. He has fought a good fight and he's now finished his course. And without doubt, he's kept the faith. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Glenn. And help us to be examples of integrity, of forthrightness, of courage like he was. So church family, I just wanted to leave this message for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 And that's from Reverend Carver Anderson. So the week continues, and we have another funeral this weekend. Sister Aurelia's brother will be buried. And we just want to encourage us as we continue to pray. First Peter 4, verse 7, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober, sober-minded, so we can pray. So brethren, we just want to continue to encourage each other. Encourage each other. The few, next few days are going to be tough encourage each other, encourage your family, encourage each other, and we pray. I just want to say thank you for listening, and I love you. And I know that's something we don't say very often to people. When I'm gone, we can't say, it. I love you, church, and this is not because I'm standing here. You know, most of the times when I, talk, I say, I love you, and that is coming from my heart. So thank you. God bless you. Have a blessed day and a blessed week. Amen. Thank you. Just thank you, our sister Lesmary, and we'll have a time, an offering. Um, so the the agenda is slightly um, changed, but um, if we could sing, it's to you I give the glory. It's to you I give the praise.
just ask your blessing on this offering, Lord Jesus. Just bless it, Lord Jesus. You know what is working to be done through it, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I just pray for the Maxine family, Lord Jesus, as they're going through this grief, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, just be with them, Lord Jesus, because I've been through that myself, so I know what it's all about, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, just take care of them, Lord Jesus. I know it's a long way to go, Lord Jesus. But we, we, I know you are there with them, Lord Jesus. Whatever the journey will come to, Lord Jesus. I know you will guide and protect them through their journey, Lord Jesus. I exalt this in your precious name. Amen. anything at all. My heart is breaking, my knees are wobbling, but I'm here. Amen. I, I, want to, I want you to join me in a song that is, is on my heart, and it, it's just to lift all your spirits. The message I want to leave with you this morning is, look after each other, Amen. is what pastor would want. I want us all to sing, joy is a flag, joy is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart. <laughs> Back flown high from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart, joy is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart, for the king is the resident there. So fly high, you let go, let the whole world know, let the whole world know. Be seated, please. Thank you. Thank you, Maxine. Thank you, Maxine. Yeah. Thank you. Let the whole world know that the king is in residence. Where? Here and here and there and everywhere. Amen. Amen. Memory verse, we're moving on. Last week's, it was Romans 12, verse 21. Uh, yes, please, you need a microphone. Diane. Romans 12, verse 21. But stand, Diane. Come on, you cannot sit down and do the memory verse. <laughs> Be bold. Greetings, everyone. My condolences yes. to the family and to the whole church. Romans 12, verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil by doing good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with, with good. A tough one, isn't it? It's a tough one. Yeah. Not an eye for an eye, is it? No. It's doing the opposite. Yeah. And this week's memory verse is quite uh, slightly longer than last week's. And we'll all say it together. 1 Samuel verses six, uh, sorry, chapter 16, verse 7. The Lord said, come on, let's say it together. The Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. 
The Lord does not look at the things men look at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Okay, once more, as Pastor Glenn would say, once more, believe it. So, it's Samuel, sorry, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things men look at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Yes, and me and my brother over there, Emmanuel, oh, we can talk about height, can't we? <laughs> yes, the Lord does look at the height, which is good, really. Okay. Um, testimonies and exaltations. And we've got our brother, Franklin. Give him a Yeah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Very in, yeah, mixed emotions here this morning. And um, first thing I'd like to do is thank, uh, thank my family, church family, who came and supported me on Friday, who, lay, who helped me to comfort me in laying to rest my father. And, and, as, I, and as I can see now, it's been a traumatic weekend, especially for the Gordon family. <sighs> well, they say God heals a broken heart, and he certainly has this morning, because I see no sad faces. I see no sad faces. And Maxine and the family, uh, you have my deepest, deepest sympathy. And no matter what, no matter what, our prayers are with you. The church family is with you. And most of all, God is with you. So thank you. Thank you. Claudia. Yeah, good morning, church. Good morning, Sister Maxine and family. My heart is broken for Pastor because there was such good news about my son. I did ring Pastor Thursday evening, I think it was, when we came back from London. He didn't answer. And then I thought, that's unusual for Pastor not to answer because he's always there. He's always there for us. Whenever time we, anything happen, he's there. But it may be a couple of hours later than I saw the, the message that he was going off to the hospital. Then another message come again. But I was getting the days confused because I was thinking it was uh, Wednesday, but I know my son went down for his operation Wednesday. Um, because he, he rang and he said, I think it was Tuesday, he said, Mom, they found a heart, he said. But the doctors, they had to go to Scotland to make sure everything was fine. And thank God everything was fine. Because he rang me back about quarter to four and he said, Mom, he said, it's Chris. And uh, they're taking him down. Uh, that was Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday. And anyway, about 20 to 1, a phone call came to say it was all done, it went very well, and he's doing well. So we have to thank God for that. We have to thank God for that. And I'm thanking every one of this family in this church for their prayers and support. We haven't been here very long, just over one year, but we're thanking you all for everything that you're doing for us. And Sister Maxine and family, anything that you need, please, please, please don't be afraid to, to call us. We'll be there, we'll be there. Because I know Pastor would have been there for us, you know, because 
And I've got to say this as well. I remember when we went to Jamaica, Pastor was there. And I remember um, Brother Raymond wasn't well one day, and Pastor and, and your sister Maxine turned up. And I said to both of you, I said, I said, Pastor, we're going to Jamaica. I said, you know where we could maybe get a car to hire? And Pastor turned around and he said, I've got one, you could have it. So how good was that? And when we got to the hotel after the funeral, of um, our brother-in-law funeral, you were there. But what we did, we made sure that we went into the petrol station, we washed that car, cleaned it out nicely for Pasta. And, you know, we, we're thankful for all of that. And we did have some good times, didn't we, Sister Maxine? We had a laugh in the, in, in the, um, in the hotel. But you know what? I'm never, ever, ever, ever going to forget all of that. It just rested on my heart. And, you know, I'm just so grateful that we attended this church. And it was only through Brother John that invited us. Praise God for Brother John and his wife. Thank you all very much for us, Raymond, and the rest of our family. And I haven't actually told my son yet that past has passed. I didn't want to say anything to, to him just yet about that. But he was, he was like a light shining when we actually went into the room to see him. And the doctors, they cannot believe. He's back on the ward. He went back on the ward yesterday. And thank God. And we're asking you all to continue to pray for him so that he's lifted up. And we all can lift him up also. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> God bless you. Condolences to the Gordon family. Firstly, I'd like to say the selfless people that walk the earth. And I can testify that Pastor Gordon was certainly one of them. He never said he was too busy. He never took time for himself. Maybe that's part of why we've lost him, now we have. And I really want to say, in June of last year, my mum wasn't very well, I'm sure you know who she is, it's Babs Panton. And she ended up in hospital having had her heart stopped which we didn't know at the time when she left in the ambulance. And I tried to ring Pastor, it was very late, and I didn't get him. So I made my journey with part of my family to the hospital. And as I pulled up in the car park, Pastor rang, and it was after midnight. And he said, Jackie, what's the matter? I said, oh, Mum's not well. I said, they've taken her by ambulance. I gave him the background. He said, I'm coming. I said, no. I said, don't come, it's too late. He said, I'm coming. And he did show up, and it was very, very late. And she was also intubated. Thankfully, she came through. The next day, or the next night, they phoned us again. She wasn't well. And Pastor Gordon left his home and his family, and he came back again the next night. It was very small hours. And he walked with me. My legs were not my own. And he walked me to the bedside and he said, it's okay, it'll be okay. And we got there and he prayed over her. And what I experienced, I know Maxine and the family have experienced also, not knowing what the next moment is going to bring. And he continued to be there for us. And I can't tell you the hole and the gap in my family's heart. My mother is broken, and I know you are shattered also. But please, as Maxine has said, look after each other. It doesn't cost anything to say good morning. It doesn't, we are not guaranteed to say good night. But we need to know there is a God, and his way must prevail. And when we look at our own mortality, he often told us that, and it became a cliche. Now we know tomorrow is promised to no one. And I want us all to remember him with fondness. 
He was selfless. He was righteous. He was true. He was honest. He was faithful. He was dedicated. And he was a man of God. And if there's nothing else we gain from that, it is seeing the example that he left in this church. The soul of this church will never be the same. But I know in time we will heal. I miss him so much because now I know that we don't have someone we can call on and he will just come. My mother said she thought that she, he would be the one to bury her. Now we have to be looking to bury our pastor. The life that we have lived is not a good one when we don't have a faith and a God that we trust. I am so, so, so sad that we have come to this point. But I know we will prevail and we will make it. They said weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. <laughs> I'm so blessed, so blessed to have had him walk through and in our lives. Thank you. <laughs> it is, it's hard, it's really, really hard. Thank you, Jackie. Hi, just one scripture to encourage us, and Jackie mentioned part of it. It says, trust in the Lord with all, not some, all of our hearts, not to lean on our own understanding, but in all, not some, all of our ways, Acknowledge him, and he will make our paths straight before us. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia, and Jackie, and Claudette, and everybody came up, and especially Maxine. <laughs> I don't think I could do what you did um, there. Yes, okay. Um, can we have the praise and worship um, team, please? Again, for praise and worship, free, feel free to sit, to stand, to cry, to dance, to laugh. But it's, it's, it's God's house, we are God's people. Amen. Amen. One thing Amen. I know is that Pastor Gordon was a worshiper, and I'm an unofficial member of his church. <laughs> and even since I've been here, I've seen him grow in worship. And I, you know, he's big old pastor, but I've seen that I saw the growth in him, and I know that I talked to, just a couple of weeks ago about when you're in the high, when you're in the low, God is still, God's name is still worthy to be praised, and when you praise the Lord, it confuses the enemy. Yes, our heart is broken, but as Sister Maxine led us in the song, joy is a flag, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes, we will miss him, but we will see him again. We don't, we don't weep or we don't, we don't weep like as those who have no hope. We have hope. So as we mourn in here today, let us still worship God for, for giving us the pastor for as long as we did have, for the lives that he had touched. Today, yesterday I was thinking about, thank you God that I met him and that I was able to come here and, and I'm here, you know, helping to do the worship. I'm thankful, I'm grateful for the time that we have. So the song we're gonna go into worship is called The Master's Calling. Listen while you can still hear. Pastor chose these songs. I wonder what he'd be saying. While you can still hear, while you have breath, the master is calling you. If you're not one of his, he's calling you to be one of his. And if you are one of his, he's calling you to come in closer. Listen while you still can hear. For those who can stand, let us stand and worship. Still Oh 
situating um, what Kath says, that pastor chose all these songs. And, you know, I've, I've got everything here. The service for today from pastor. So <laughs> oh, thank you, pastor. <laughs> okay. But the next song we're going to sing is My Soul Says Yes. Where you lead me, I will follow. When you call me, whether you call me to do your will or you call me home, I will answer. Oh Lord, please teach me how to know your way. My soul says yes. My soul says yes.
We're going to go into You're My Life, Lord Jesus. You're my everything. You're the sweetest song I'll ever sing. You are my everything. You're my life, Lord Jesus. You're my life. intercession but Lynn's going to bring those for us
Greetings to the church in the house. Greetings to the body of Christ online. My condolences, Sister Maxine and the Gordon family. Our hearts are with you. We are now going to seat the Lord's face in prayer. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord our God, Lord, we come to you this morning with our hearts torn apart. Lord, we have lost our dear brother, our dear pastor. And Lord, it is only sometimes when you lose somebody you know the value of that person. Lord, he meant everything to this church. He is in the fibers of this building, Lord, because he, he sought after your heart and he did love to worship you, Lord. So this morning, even though we are distraught and despairing, Lord, we still can be thankful. We still raise a hallelujah because we were privileged to see this man of God. We were privileged to worship with him and to hear his sermons. Lord, I remember coming here during the, the post-pandemic period and just listening to him preach with such passion, Lord. Every fiber of this man said that he loved you and he wanted to share that word with the rest of the world, Lord, and he did. He used his time here prayerfully, vibrantly, and passionately. And Lord, we will continue to worship you. We will continue your kingdom work. Not because pastor said, Lord, but because your word said. But he gave us a good example of someone who wanted to give over their life to your work and to your values and, and to make sure that the world understood that there is a God. There is a God and a God that loves us, that cares for us and who wants us to be in fellowship with him every day that we live. So Father God, I pray that every person who can hear my voice now would reflect on the words that have been spoken about Pastor Glenn Gordon this morning. Let us reflect, Father God, on our own lives. And we know, Lord, that life is not promised forever because you tell us that in your word. But Father, you do promise that you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. In our time of need and in the time of joy and gladness, you are always there with us, Father. So Lord, I just pray this morning for your comfort on Sister Maxine, on all of her children, Lord, and all of her grandchildren, the nieces, the nephews, the brothers and sisters that remain, Father God. Father, I, I saw them on the, the video for the funeral of Brother Neville. And Lord, the family have been through so much. But Lord, we know you are a kind God. And we know, Lord, that you can strengthen them and that you will bring them through this, Lord. And that this fellowship will be there to support and help in every way possible. But Lord, we just seek your strength, your comfort, your guide at this very difficult time. Lord, let us come together under the banner of Jesus and just continue to worship you, Lord as we go forward now in a new season. Lord, we can reflect on all of the things that pastor told us to do. And it was your word, which is to look to you first, put you first in our lives. And I pray, Father God, that if there is anybody in the building this morning that doesn't know you, that the words that have been spoken, the songs that have been sung, will pierce their heart, Lord. Because we know that pastor would be rejoicing with us to know that somebody had benefited from this service here this morning, this service of thanksgiving, this service of praise, because we always will praise you, Lord. We will always seek your face, no matter whether times are tough, no matter whether there are good times to come, Lord. You are the center of this church, Lord. You are the, the master and the king of our lives. And we just thank you for being with us this morning, Father God. Lord, even in our time of grieving, we do not forsake look into the world and asking for your blessing, for your protection, for your guiding, and for your lifting, and for peace in other areas of the world, Lord, that are having difficulty at this time. Lord, the mission remains, the mission to take the gospel to those difficult places in the world. So Lord, today, even as we grieve, we pray, Father, that you'll help us to see what are the next steps for City Road Baptist. Let us not be dissuaded or distracted because of our grief, Lord, but let us have a renewed vigor for giving the gospel to the world. 
even to the person that we meet in the street, to the bus driver, to the person in the supermarket, wherever it may be, Lord, let us put on that cloak of gladness and say thank you that we had a pastor that led us to this point. But Father God, we wait on you now. We wait on you for further direction as to where this church will go, but it will always be under the banner of Jesus our Lord. So we thank you and we glorify your name, Father God. We bless you and we praise you and we give thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Give my 
use me, I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. And of the children, um, we'll go to the junior church. Del, are you taking them? Yes? And what more do you support in Del? If you like to. Thank you. What does it mean to be a minister? Maxine and the family can vouch for that. You know, it's, it's a. Pastor God used to say to me, while Manuel comes, I'm just going to just uh, have 30 seconds of your time. Yep, Pascal used to say, you know, Michael, it's a tough job. It, you know, you don't know what's it like. It's really difficult. And many years ago, when I was part of a group which met on a Saturday morning, that was about 2015, we prayed for the ministers in the area, and it was Christmas time, because they do three, four, five, six different services. And the family time is used up, and they haven't got much time with the family. And there's all sorts taking place. There's planning and everything. So it's, you know, give yourself away. Who wants to be a minister here? We're looking for a new minister. It's not an easy job. And Pastor Glenn did it without grump in our morning and despite all the arrows and, 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 and everything, but there was joy and everything and we appreciate. I just thought I'd just mention that. You know, give ourselves, we need to give, I need to give more of myself away, you know, to Christ and what you want to do in my life. Because I'm, you know, like most people, I'm selfish. I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do that. But yeah, thank you. Can we welcome Manuel to, to come in the world? Yeah. And it's all about Samuel and selecting the one that God chose and anointed. I'm quite really want to know about all this, you know. Thank you, man. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. Shall we pray for you? Yes. Yeah, because it's, it's one of these Sundays that, um, you know, unusual. Um, Father, we thank you for our brother and we thank you for his, his word. He gave himself away. He's a minister. He does your word. He goes out. He preaches. You are his hands and his feet. And he's here to deliver your message for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, brother. Good afternoon, church. Like Brother Michael said, it's an unusual Sunday. None of us has seen this coming. And um, all the time we have shared our testimony. And you know, the, the one basic thing we always told you is this. It is the love that you have all shown towards us. And that's why we are here today. And it was Pastor Gordon who stretched his arms towards us and said, come in, you can be a family with us. And we blended in so easily because he loved us like his own brother and sister. You know, normally when you go to a new place, you go to different churches, you go to different, you know, places and see, you know, where you feel better, you know, where you feel more welcomed. And let me tell you that secret. We have never been to, we have never been to any other church to try it because we got what we wanted from Pastor Gordon and from you all. Amen. 
And I know when we are here today, our hearts are very heavy. But we are not grieving like the people, those who do not have any hope. Amen. Amen. We have a hope in Christ, you know. We have a hope in Christ. And to, uh, to the Gordon family and to the church, I would like to read a portion of the scripture from uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Let me read for you. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of the mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will all be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. In Jesus' second coming, when he comes in the midair, it is the turn of all those who have been dead in Christ to rise first. And after them, if we are alive, we will also quickly change and caught up together with the Lord in the midair. And we are going to be there with the Lord forever. And if, if the Lord comes today, it is Pastor Gordon's turn first, then we all. And we are together, and we will be together with him there, forever with the Lord. What a great hope that we have. You know, this hope is not a fragile flame, but it's a blazing fire that even death cannot extinguish. Nothing can take this hope away from us, right? The departing of the dear ones can never take this hope from us. We are going to see everyone one more time, or we are going to be together forever. And that's why in Christ, there is no goodbye. There's no goodbye in Christ. There's only an eternal togetherness, always with the Lord eternally with the Lord together, all of us. What a great hope, what a great hope we have in Christ. And today I am very much thankful to the Lord for what is happening here. Um, the subject, the Bible verses, the readings, the prayers, the songs, everything has been selected by Pastor Garden. We thank God for that wonderful thing and me, a humble servant, is here to deliver that message Pastor Garden selected. And I'm, I feel privileged and feel happy. At the same time, I wished if he had, if he were here. And there was always a time that I wanted Pastor Garden to listen to me by sitting here. But I always spoke in his absence. He must have listened to my message in WhatsApp, I believe. And, I, and, you know, but today, let me deliver that message Pastor Garden has left for us. And today's message is called and anointed. And the scripture portion is 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 to 13. And here, it is about the calling and the anointing of King David. That's what we see uh, here in this portion. And the background is, uh, is very familiar to us. You know, Israel is a theocratic kingdom. That means God is their ruler. But there came a time 
the people rejected God and they thought we need a king, you know, like other people. And God gave them a, gave, God gave them a king. What was his name? His name was Saul, the first king. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. He became a king, he was 30 years old. And he ruled Israel for 42 years. You know, one, one peculiarity of Saul was he was chosen by people. The people looked at his features, he was tall. You know, even if he hides somewhere, you know, his head will stick out, you know. So that all he was. And he had several features and people chose him to be the, to be the king. But you know, there came a time Saul fell in, you know, uh, you know, Saul didn't obey God and God was never happy with Saul. And God chose another person to be the king of Israel and that is King David. Now we, you see all these in 1 Samuel chapter 10, 1 Samuel chapter 13, you can read all this story. All these things, yes. Now we come to um, chapter 16, verses uh, 1 to 3. We see Samuel is on his way to anoint the king, the next king in Bethlehem. So chapter 16, verses 1 to 3. Chapter 16, verses 1 to 3. Yes, let me read that for you. The Lord said to Samuel, how, how long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as a king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear, hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I'll show you what to do, what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. It's a mission God has given to Samuel. Samuel had a very um, important, important place in the history of Israel. Samuel was living in a time of transition you know after the israelites left egypt you know they came to the promised land and in the promised land um, joshua divided the places lands and they were all living and to look after them god gave them judges you know several judges came they were there was the life was going on but you know what happened? The people were living in, in the way they wanted to live. If you look at the last verse of the book of uh, Judges, you know, you will see the people were living the way they wanted, you know, never fearing God. In such a situation, Samuel was born as a result to Hannah's prayer. And Samuel has been in the, in the mission from, the, from his very birth, I would say. He was there for the people. He was there for the people as a judge. He was there for the people as a priest. And he was there as a people, uh, you know, as the leader of the people of Israel. And then the first king, Saul, came into, uh, you know, uh, became the first king. Saul became the first king. So here... Samuel is holding a very key position in, you know, in the history of Israel. And Samuel, you know, God saw Samuel, now, I'm not in favor of Saul anymore. You need, to, you need to anoint another person to be the king. And I have chosen one from the house of Jesse. You know who Jesse is? Jesse is the grandson of Ruth and Boaz, you know. So, from, um, so they're, in, they're in Bethlehem. So Samuel is supposed to go to Bethlehem, anoint one of the sons of Jesse to be the next king. And Samuel was a bit afraid. Now if Saul comes to know about this, Saul will kill him. Because Saul, you know, Saul is someone who is very strong. Saul doesn't have any 
uh, you know, any, any problem to harm anybody, you know. He has such a character, he will take things into his hands. But God said, there's one way, take a heifer and go and say you have some, you have, you know, to do a sacrifice there. And Samuel did exactly what God said. You know, we see from verses four to five, Samuel arriving in Bethlehem and Samuel consecrating the family of Jesse for the offering. So let's read the, those verses four and five. <coughs> Chapter 16, verses four and five. <clears throat> Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, they asked do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourself and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. <clears throat> so Samuel comes to Bethlehem. You now the people are, you know, in fear because he doesn't come there very often. Oh, they thought there is something serious. Then he said, no, I'm here to, you know, uh, do an offering. Please consecrate yourself. And please call the sons of uh, Jesse and his sons. And I had to consecrate them for the offering. And Samuel did exactly what God wanted him to do. Without fear, he came and complete, uh, started completing the work of God. Now what happens in Jesse's home is um, something interesting. You know, verses six onwards. We look at verses six onwards and we see Samuel is trying to uh, anoint one by one, you know, of the sons of Jesse. Jesse has eight sons, you know, the, the elder one being Eliab. Um, and uh, verses six onwards, let's have it, let's read. Verse six. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Now, this is what happens, you know, in the house of Jesse. Jesse thought all his sons are perfect for the ministry or to be the king of Israel. And obviously they are all, you know. And the Eliab, the eldest one, he gets a chance, the first chance. And he comes in front of Samuel, and Samuel thinks this is the person. See, look at his height. Maybe he is well built. Maybe he is kind of a little fair. He's okay, looks strong. And of course, three of Jesse's sons were in the army, so it seems that they were very strong men. Yes. Even Samuel thought the firstborn is the one. But God said, you know, I'm not looking at the outward appearance. I'm looking at what is inside. What is inside the heart? And I told you, when the people chose Saul, they looked at his outward appearance. And he could never be that good king of Israel. Now God doesn't want that mistake to happen again. He said, I'm not looking at you know, his outward appearance or what makes him great, but I'm going to look, you know, in, inside. And the first one is rejected. Then the second one is rejected. Abinadab also is rejected. Then the third one, Shama, also is rejected. And all seven of them getting rejected. You know, one thing we need to understand is this. God is not looking into our outward appearance. 
God is not looking into what do you think is great about you. You know, we all know, we all think we have so many positives, right? When you go to an interview, they'll ask you, what are the positive things about you? I always get confused. We always have a positive thing about us. But most of the things are not necessarily what God looks into. He looks into what is within our hearts. He looks into what is within our hearts and, and, and that's how, that's how he chooses. Okay. Now all, all those sons of Jesse must have been apt by outward look, you know, to be the king of Israel. But none of them were, you know, apt, you know, with the heart, with the Lord. And, and God didn't want a king after the flesh. Because they had already won and experienced it with Saul. You now God wanted someone who has his own heart. Amen. God wanted someone with his own heart. Dear friends, if you are here today, if you are in the church here today, listening to me, and if you're online listening to me, I think it is because God has chosen you to be here. It is God's choice that you are here today. And we read in the New Testament, in John chapter 15, verse 16, Jesus himself said, in John chapter 15, verse 16, Jesus said that he has chosen us and, and, and we are not choosing him. We didn't choose him. And the verse is, you did not choose me, but I chose you and, and appointed you so that you might go and be a fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will <clears throat> give you. You know, David was called because he had the heart of God. Saul was rejected because he didn't have the heart of God. And in the same way, there is a God's call even for us. And the peculiarity is, like God went after David, God went, you know, came after us. God came after us, God chose us from different places, from different countries. You know, maybe I've told you before. One and a half years ago, none of you knew that we two existed. And we never knew this church existed. It is because that love that, you know, brings us here. And we believe it is the Lord who chose us to be here. And we are doing what we are doing. And it was God who chose Pastor Gordon to be here as the pastor for a couple of decades. You know. So, it is the God's call that matters. And in John chapter 6, verse 44, we see that, you know, we are all attracted to God because God attracts us, not we attracting God. Now, no one comes to comes to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is the Lord who draws us towards him, and it is, it is him who decides what our destiny is. And we are going to rise up one last day because he wants us to do that, you know? That's his entire plan for us. So, you know, we are here because God called us. That's one thing. Now, God's call is not based on anything you would do or, or achieve for him. It is all based on his love for you. You know, he wants all of us to be his children. And as far as I know, Pastor Gordon had a burden for the souls. Now, in most of our personal conversations, Pastor Gordon will always speak about 
reaching out to people, reaching out to all sorts of people. You know, he would say, you know, we have so many Asian families out here, we have to reach out to them. Um, last Saturday, as we, as we were here uh, with Pastor uh, during the prayer meeting, we even discussed with him one of our, uh, one of our desires, one of our plans. You now, plan to bring children and young people to the church. And he encouraged us. And one last sentence he said to us was this. Even if only we three are there, we will do it. That's what he said. Even if only three of us are there, we will do it. And I believe that's what we are going to do. In the absence of Pastor Gordon, we have to do this. And God will bless us that we will do this. And you know, all these empty chairs in the sanctuary will be occupied. That's what Pastor Gordon wanted, you know, all these empty chairs to be occupied with children, with young people, with families. You know, he always told us we are the, we are the answers to his prayer. He used to pray for, a, pray for an Asian family, you know. And we are here because of that prayer. He even reminded us that uh, on last Saturday, you know, saying that. Yes. And I believe for the last few, few, few months, he has been speaking on salvation. He's been speaking on accepting Christ, making commitment, working closely with the church. And he was, and he was asking for commitment, right? How many times standing here he spoke on commitment? And the question is, have you responded to that call? Or have we responded to that call well? And he would always say, I'm not forcing you, take your time, right? He always said that. But you know, one thing today as I say is then I realize tomorrow is not in our hands. Even the next minute is not in our hands. If you're someone, if you're, in a, if you're, wherever you are in your journey, as Sister Pauline says, wherever you are in your journeys, with spiritual journey, it is good that you, it is good that you make that choice. If you are someone who has, who has not accepted Christ as a savior, do it. That's God's will. If you're someone who has, if you're someone who has been coming to the church, and haven't made a commitment. I haven't made a decision to take a baptism or to join the church and in all its activities. I request you to do it because that's what Pastor Gordon wanted. It is what he wanted and it's what the Lord wants us all to do because you can't push this decision to another day, another month, another year because those things are not in our hands. The Lord only knows. So in whatever capacity you could serve the church, you should do it. You know, don't look at what you cannot do. Think of what you can do. You know, I always think of Brother Franklin. He would stand there, hand out the leaflets to us in the morning with a very happy face. He would give us a hug or a shake hand. What a great ministry that is, to see someone, you know, smiling at you as you come in and giving a shake hand or assurance that, you know, we are here together, praising God, worshiping God. It's a great ministry, I would say. It's a great ministry. And like, like that, there are a lot of things you can do here in the church. On a Saturday evening, you could come and you could arrange all these ch chairs in place. A little thing that you can do, you know. We don't need any scriptural knowledge for that. 
You don't need any special strength for that. But you can do all that. The only thing, we need to make that commitment to the Lord. We are called. God has picked us. You know, hand-picked us, I would say. And we have that call, and we need to respond to that call. And if you're someone who wants to take such a decision for your life, you can speak to our deacons, you can speak to us, you can speak to the deacons, you can speak to the church. Give us a message, give us a call, and it will all be taken care. And once we are called, we are also anointed for the work, like David is anointed. David was not only called, he was anointed to do his work. Now let's read from verses 11 to 13. <clears throat> so he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. Now Samuel is running into a problem. The seven sons have been rejected. And, you know, Samuel is asking, is there any more? Is there any more? Then look at uh, the answer from Jesse. He said, there is one more. He is tending the sheep. Now from this we understand, you know, Jesse's family must have been, uh, must not have been too rich. They've been a poor people and they live, uh, you know, by tending sheep. That's a living. And, you know, do you know one thing? Jesse is not taking even his name here. Did Jesse say, I have another son, his name is David? No. Did Jesse say that? No, he didn't say. He said, I have one more. There is still the youngest. He didn't take his name even. And sadly, David was not even called for the meeting. <laughs> Can you imagine? Jesse, you know, said all his children, you know, maybe Jesse must have given them all good clothes, must have given them all a bath, you know, I suppose. They were all presented well before Samuel. But this David was not even called. Surprising, right? But when God calls, nothing matters, right? The call of man, it doesn't matter. You know, by this time, David must have been um, either in his teenage, I would say. He, was, he must have been in his teenage. That's what, you know, um, the Jewish historian Josephus uh, uh, would say. I mean, he must have been around uh, 15. Uh, but, you know, though Jesse did not mention him by his name, though David was never invited, you know, to this event, it was God's decides, God's plan that he would anoint David as the king of Israel. Now sometimes this is the case. Sometimes you are not the intellect person in the family, right? Sometimes you are the least choice of everyone. Sometimes you are not even named in, in places. Sometimes uh, you are not considered Sometimes no one is asking for your views. Do you have anything to say? No. Sometimes people take decisions for you. You know, while I was growing up, my parents always bought dresses for me. Maybe until the age of um, 20. Um, <laughs> they would buy a dress, maybe, uh, uh, let me say, they would buy me a shirt and bring it, and when they bring it, I will, okay, this is my new shirt. And when I put it on, it, it must be a little bigger, you know, little bigger, you know, not fit. Then my mom would say, 
Anyway, you're growing. <laughs> it, it would fit after a few months, you know. But sometimes people are not asking you anything because they don't think they need to ask you. You're not that considered, you're not that taken uh, into account sometimes. That's how David was, but God's plan was very, very different for him. God said, bring him in and look at the words of Samuel. He said, until he comes in, I'm not even going to sit. So David must have been coming, must have been, you know, David must come from a very far place, maybe. Someone has to go to David, find him, bring him back. It would take a lot of time. But Samuel realized the one person that's coming through that door is going to be the king of Israel. Yeah. And after a while, David comes in and the Lord says, look at that guy. He is the one. He looks young to you. He looks handsome. He may not be as strong as his brothers, but he is going to be the king of Israel. Anoint him. So he, verse 12, so he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. Amen. Yes, this person is the one. This is the new king of Israel. Amen. And looking at, including me, looking at you, looking at me, I would say we are the one. Right. We are the one. From your family, from your tribe, from your clan, from your country, from your people, you are the one to be called into God's church. You're the one to be anointed for a work that God has given to you, for a work God has committed into your hands. You better anoint him. And I used to wonder, where did David get his heart? Because we see that he was a man after God's own heart. You know, in first, house, in first Samuel, chapter 13, verse 14, we read, The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be the commander over his people. So David, in fact, was a man after God's own heart. And I used to wonder, where did he get that heart from? And I believe it's not from his father. Because Jesse did not even mention him by his name. And David never mentions Jesse anywhere in his Psalms, but he mentions his mom. In a couple of places, David mentions his mom. In Psalm chapter 86, verse 16. Psalm chapter uh, Psalm, uh, 86. Verse 16, he said, Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength in, in behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you just as my mother did. David's mom served the Lord. And I believe it was David's mom who gave him, you know, the Lord. It was David's mom who taught him who the Lord is. It was David's mom who taught, taught him how to love the Lord. In another, in another version, it says, my mom, your maid servant, you know. So David understood his mom being a very humble servant of God, you know, uh, yeah, is a humble servant of God. And it was that woman of God gave God's heart to you. David. And if you're a mom today, if you're someone who is going to be a mom today, let me tell you, if you like 
And my question to you, would you give your God to your children? Would you impart this love of God to your children as well? Because that's one of the ministries that you, that you can do. Long back, I was speaking to you. No, it was not long back, maybe a few weeks back. I was speaking to you about <clears throat> the great uh, hymn writer, you know, the, the, the one who wrote Amazing Grace. And I said, it was his mom praying for him, right? It was his mom praying for him to make him a Christian. And this is what, what, this is what we see often, yeah, or, or all the time. A godly mother can always give their children the God they love. And that's a mission too. And now, <clears throat> David is here as someone who has been called. And he's this someone who has been anointed for the ministry. <clears throat> and in verse 13, we see something very exciting. Um, 16, for Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. We see the Spirit of the Lord coming upon David. We see the Spirit of God coming upon David. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. So right after the anointing, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David so powerfully he started doing things for the Lord. And now, let me tell you what, um, what you know, David's reign looked like, you know, uh, in, in, in the kingdom of Israel. <clears throat> David was the best king of Israel. He was the best king of Israel. He was someone who ran the kingdom according to God's will. It was in David's time, the Israel enlarged its portions and became the biggest country ever, you know, uh, you know, during his reign. Of course, he went through down times. We, know, we all know that. But David was always someone who was willing to ask forgiveness to God and get back to the Lord, right? He always wanted to get back right with the Lord. And thus, he was one of the great kings of Israel. His anointing, the anointing on him was real. And God made him do a lot of things, uh, you know, that were, uh, you know, amazing for the people. And that's how there was even a slogan, you know, among the neighboring countries. What was the slogan? You might remember, Saul killed a thousand, David killed 10,000. Saul killed a thousand, David killed the 10,000. Now he became the best king of Israel because of the anointing that he has received. <clears throat> now let me remind you again, we are also anointed. All of us are anointed. If you are a child of God, we are anointed. Now we, we, we read from a verse from 1 John. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just, just as it has taught you, remain in him. In this one verse, Apostle John repeats the word anointing three times. He tells you again a couple of things. This anointing is real. Amen. This anointing is Real. This is not counterfeit. This is not something that we speak, you know, very highly of and not working. You know. 
This is something that is very, very real. It is not counterfeit. And this, this anointing teaches you to do things, you know, very well. And since we have this anointing in us, we have a mission, we have a ministry like David had. David had to rule the kingdom of Israel. That was the, you know, for, way, for that way, you know, for that he was anointed. And we are also anointed for God's work. Now, in your family, you have work of God that is pending. You know? In your church, you have God's work, you know, pending. You know, in this country, you might be, you know, you may have a, a God's work pending. You know, wherever you are and whatever you do, God has called you. He has anointed you that you will complete certain tasks. I don't know what that is for you. You need to ask God, Lord, what am I going to do for my church? What am I going to do for my family? What am I going to do my country? What am I going to do? You need to ask the Lord. Because if he has called you, he has anointed you to do that. And he will help you accomplish it. Because the Lord, once he starts a good thing, he is the one who finishes it. And that's why we always say he's the author and the finisher of our faith. The author and the finisher. He doesn't leave us in the middle. He doesn't leave us in between. He will help us complete whatever the task is. Dear, dear church, we have a commitment. We have a commitment to finish. You know, during last Sunday, as our pastor was concluding his sermon, Love in Action, based on Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 21, he gave us a mandate. And I quote, Let's go together. Let's watch each other's back. Let's encourage and support one another. Let's laugh together and cry together. But let's walk together and let's take the light that's in us to the dark world where we are pardoned past love until he calls us home. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. These, were, these were his last words in the sermon as he concluded. No. None of us thought God would call him home, but he was called. He was called home. His business here, here on this earth, in this church, is over. And he is called home, and he is in the best place. Last Saturday, when we met him, you know, he was saying, you know, the theme for the year is knowing him more. Sister Pearl and reminded of that. And he caught that verse from Philippians chapter 3, where Paul said, I want to know him more. And let me tell you today, Pastor Gordon knows God better today than he knew God on that Saturday. Because he is seeing him face to face. But we are left behind here. We are here in this church. We have the mandate that he has left for us. We have to work together. We have to go together. We have to laugh together. We have to cry together. We have to support one another. And we have to go into the world, to the dark world, to share that gospel that enlightened us. He has left that mandate with us. And I believe we are all anointed to complete that work of God, like Pastor Gordon wanted. And today, as I, as I conclude my sermon, let me remind you, if you are here, it's not an accident. You are here because God has called you. And if, you are, if he has called you, he has anointed you to do a great task for him. 
and God will help you do it. And I would like to comfort the church by saying we are following the mandate of our dear pastor, our beloved pastor, Glenn Gordon. And may the good Lord bless you all and may the good Lord comfort us all and may God's presence be with Gordon family and may God's blessing rest with us all. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you for the man. Was that fantastic? Absolutely. Thank you, brother. Okay. And if you want to watch it again, it's all, it's all going to be online, you know, and um, watch it. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are, it's like an extended service. Please feel free if you have to go, you know, to actually catch a taxi. We have got communion, and then afterwards there's tea and biscuits, yeah, if, if, if you'd like to stay. Um, so, uh, can I... Ask the choir to sing the communion song, please. Um, and it's an open communion. It means that you haven't got to be a member of this church. Um, you could be a member of another church, but you haven't got to be baptized or, you know, just if you love the Lord Jesus, you're welcome to come and not participate in the bread and wine, as long as you, have, you know, love the Lord Jesus. Uh, the communion song is there is a redeemer. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah. If you'd like to come and take the bread and wine, we're going to start from the left and go down and around, right and come up, and then this side. Thank you.
thank you. If we can ask so, um, Secretary Perlin to come to bless the bread and the wine, please. If, if you want. Merciful Father God, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we glorify your name. Lord Jesus, you came. You came into this world. You gave your life. You gave our sacrifice, our atonement. And through your resurrection, we have hope. Hope of eternal life. So, Lord, as we come around the communion table, we give you thanks. We pray, Lord, that you will forgive us for our sins and our trespasses. We lay everything, Lord, at your feet. And Father God, by your stripes we are healed. So, Lord, we pray for that healing. You know the situation we are in at this moment. So, Lord, we pray for Father God, we pray that you will bless the bread, the bread that symbolizes your broken body to us. We pray, Lord, that you will bless the wine that represents your blood that was shed for us at Calvary. Lord, we give you praise, we give you thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And he says in scriptures on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he gave thanks and blessed it, broke it and said, this is my body, broken for you and for me. Let us do this in remembrance that Christ died for us. Feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. So do take the bread and feed. same night, he took the cup, he raised it, and said, this cup is a new covenant sealed by my blood. Drink it and remember that Christ's blood was shed for you and for me. Drink with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Second verse. For it reaches to the highest.
Brothers and sisters, we're at the end of a wonderful service in honor of our Lord God and our minister. Can I, can I do something that was, uh, that was done at Cannon Street by Keith? Can we just, um, just applaud Pastor Glenn and all his hard work and work done in this world. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to send you a personal message. Pastor Glenn, if, if you're listening, I'm sure you are. We love you. We love you. Thank you. Bless you for all the years that you have served us here, that you've helped, that you've gone beyond everything. Even the flowers he used to have a go at. He was hoovering, he, he was doing all the jobs behind the scenes, behind the scenes, you know, here until the early hours of the night or the morning, you know, sometimes the lights was on, yes, and it just gave everything for us. God used him, and like David, he was anointed, and he went forth, and he delivered. Um, the family could vouch for all the times that he was here and not at home. I suppose the grass must have been high. But it's, 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 it's been sweet and we do love you all. And thank you for allowing him to, sh to share him with us in, in, those, in those many ways. Before the blessings and, and the prayer, would like to say?
it. Yes. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know your labor is not in vain. The Lord gives, and the Lord is taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your heart be troubled, and do not be afraid. I'm going to prepare a place for you. He came back and took our loved one home, and we can be confident that he is at peace. True words. And that was only on Tuesday the 9th at uh, Hansworth Cemetery. Yes, it's was there. Right, the prayers and ben benediction. There's one song which we'll leave until next week. God sent his son. Ours by Pastor Gordon. Benediction. May the good Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And at the grace, did you want to, did you want to, for the grace? Yeah, I made the grace of, just say the grace to you, to turn around and say the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be up to a little more. Amen, amen, amen. Sisters and brothers, if, if like can just... Just bear with us a couple of seconds, a couple more minutes. We have uh, Reverend uh, Tanto here from Kingdom Worship. They usually worship after we finished on a Sunday. And Reverend, come along. He would like to say a few words. Praise the Lord. Um, I am I'm lost for words, first and foremost. Because um, uh, I've known Pastor Gordon, Reverend Gordon, for a little over 10 years. That's how long we've been here. And he's been like a senior brother to me, um, encouraging me asking how our church is doing and and many other things the comfort we have is that as the scripture says we do not mourn like those who have no hope and um, death is a changing room it's a place where you put off mortality and then you put on immortality. Um, as soon as I heard the news, uh, tears started flowing down my, my cheeks. But uh, coming here and seeing all of you, um, I am comforted because you are comforted. So you know that he's in the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that uh, the legacy he's left here, his family, all of you who continue his good works. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And can I say it's, it's a sad day, but it's it's a glorious thing. Okay. Thank you.
biscuits available in the rooms. Yeah, man,